Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and today I'm going to be building an extremely cheap but also very very small gaming PC. So this is going to be a PC that's great for people that don't have a lot of space or will be moving their PC around. So for example if you're going off to college or university or something like that, this is this PC is going to be great for you. Um, it's also going to be great for anybody that wants to upgrade their PC as well because the Cooling Master Elite 110 that I've got here it's got plenty of space inside. It's still very, really, really uh, like one of the smallest cases around, but it's also got enough space in there for a decent graphics card as well. Today, though, I'm going to be using AMD's one of AMD's APUs, the Ryzen 3 2200G. An APU basically means that it's got onboard graphics, and specifically with the Ryzen 3 2200G, it's actually got graphics that's able to play uh, modern games, albeit you're not going to be playing at maximum settings, but you're still going to be uh, able to game um, using this processor, and uh, you're going to get much, much faster frame rates than you would with an Intel processor doing the same thing. So the great thing about that is you don't need to buy a separate graphics card. As you can see, there's nothing here. It, you we're just using the graphics, uh, the onboard Vega graphics of this processor. So that obviously allows us to keep the cost down, uh, but I don't want to you know, cut too many corners. So I'm still using an SSD, um, courtesy of uh, Sandus down there. So that's a uh, 240 gigabyte SSD, which is uh, plenty of space for your operating system, uh, Windows 10 and, uh, and a few games and programs, that kind of thing. Um, I think every PC, even a super cheap one like this should have, uh, should have an SSD. Memory, I've gone for eight gigabytes of Corsair's Vengeance LPX, and that's 3000 megahertz as well. That's um, supported by pretty much every AMD motherboard these days. So you can get faster, but just I'm sort of erring on the side of caution here because I know that above 3000 megahertz, you can still run into trouble. But AMD's processors do make use of faster memory, so you will see better performance in games and elsewhere. So I think 3000 megahertz is a uh, justifiable choice there, and it's also a bit cheaper than the faster stuff as well. So for motherboards then, uh, it's a mini ITX case, so we need a mini ITX motherboard, and there aren't too many available, to be honest, uh, for AMD's platform with, uh, with Ryzen and AM4, but you obviously don't want to go for the X470 chipset or X370 because they're, they're pretty expensive, to be honest. So, But even here, the Gigabyte AB350N Gaming Wi-Fi um, is still around $100, so it's not the cheapest motherboard out there for, for Ryzen CPUs, but it's the cheapest one that we can get to fit into our case here. So there are other options. I'll do a link below to my article on Forbes where I build a micro ATX PC. So it's a fair bit bigger than this one, but the components are maybe slightly cheaper. Although I think overall the uh, the price was actually similar to uh, to this build. So power supply, final component um, is Cooler Masters Master Watt Lite 500, 500 watts of power there. Um, again, maybe slightly overkill for the build that we're doing here but it will allow you to, at some point to fit a more powerful graphics card or a more powerful processor, something like that, and it's pretty cheap as well. So the final component that I haven't actually spoken about is cooling, and what I'll be doing is, because we're dealing with a fairly low-end processor here, um, is to use AMD's included cooler, and here it is. So you've got your thermal paste pre-applied, you don't need to buy any extra thermal paste, it's already applied to the cooler, and um, that's the cooler that we'll be using. It gives you um, probably not a whole lot of scope for overclocking and things like that, but it's perfect for running this processor at stock speed, which is what we'll be doing. So let's crack on with the build. Okay, so here is our motherboard, and uh, you might be able to notice something uh, a little odd about it, which is that I have removed the uh, top uh, mounting clip for processor coolers here. Here is the other one installed. You'll need to remove both of these to actually mount the, uh, the stock cooler because it will screw directly into the back plate which is uh, you can see there that's what it's screwing into this big thing here so you get two threaded holes at either end and you'll need to expose those in order to mount the cooler so I'll just remove the uh, the second one here just very quickly so you can see what's going on so two screws just need a uh, fairly large crosshead screwdriver and uh, the back plate will probably fall off I'm just holding it with my hand now but that's basically what you need to take off very, very easy to do, but make sure you keep this and all the screws in the motherboard box because if you need to send the motherboard back under warranty or you can come to sell the board in the future or indeed if, uh, if you need to include, if you want to install a more powerful cooler, a lot of all-in-one coolers, um, all-in-one liquid coolers out there will use these stock plastic clips to install, so just make sure you keep them. So uh, we're now ready to install the cooler. Okay, so here is our Ryzen 3 2200G APU. 
and uh, we're now going to install it into the motherboard. So the first thing I will say is just be really, really careful of the pins on the rear. I've seen loads of these damaged over the years because uh, AMD has traditionally used uh, pins on the back of the CPU. Not that Intel's design is much better because the pins in its socket are in probably even more fragile. So you, you know, you bend one of those, that's pretty much good night for your motherboard. So here you just need to make sure that you don't drop the CPU and otherwise it will be okay. So in terms of actually fitting it, there is a specific way that you need to fit it. And if you look on the back here, you'll notice that there are two notches, or four notches, should I say, and uh, two are closer together than the others. You can kind of see that on the, uh, that's kind of replicated on the motherboard there. Um, so you can line those up, or and perhaps an even easier way is to just line up the processor, so the Ryzen logo, see if I can angle that in the lighting there. So the Ryzen logo, the top of it is facing the memory slots. That's usually the easiest way to actually remember how to uh, how to install a Ryzen CPU. So just have that Ryzen logo facing the memory slots, then sort of gently lower it over. And uh, what I do is rather than push it in, I just let the CPU wait, just do that. You might need to move it around because as you can see there, because I'm, I'm, I'm very used to doing this, um, I lined it up and it just drops into place. So you shouldn't really do anything more. It is still worth having a look around just to make sure there's no big gaps around the processor. Um, if there are, just uh, gently press on it. Uh, if it doesn't go, just lift it out again and just check those pins because nine times out of 10, that, that you know there might be one that's slightly bent that's preventing it going in. Uh, you can just use a very, very small knife to uh, just to gently bend that, that pin back in place if you have bent one. Uh, you can usually do that a few times before they snap off. Uh, and of course, you don't want them snapping off, so just try not to do it in the first place. Um, so once that process is in, all you need to do is uh, just give it one last press to make sure it's all the way in, and then push that socket latch down. And uh, that is your processor locked in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the processor cooler. So as you can see, there's already thermal paste on the bottom of the cooler. That's pre-applied by AMD, so you don't need to worry about that yourself. First thing to do is to work out which way round uh, to have the cooler, and there is a specific way round, mainly because of this metal, uh, sorry, plastic lip here on the side of the cooler. And that, you will not want to have that overlooking or overhanging the memory slots there, because obviously if I turn that round, you will see that that actually overhangs the, uh, the memory slot there. So you don't wanna have that because even with the low profile memory that we've got, it will actually block that memory from being installed in that first slot. So what we need to do is to uh, turn it round. So the that plastic AMD logo is over the back of the motherboard, over the uh, IO ports. And um, then all you need to do is to screw the four screws into the back plate. So I will do that right now. So if you want to do a, uh, tighten them up in a cross fashion. So move across diagonally from one screw to another and then just gradually move your way around. Um, it's just good practice to do this because it means that you're kind of locking it down a bit more evenly. Um, if you're applying your own thermal paste, it can help it spread evenly underneath as well. And all the screws are sprung and they'll lock off at a certain point, so you don't need to count turns or worry about them over tightening on certain screws, that kind of thing. Uh, it's really easy to do, and uh, there you go, so that's all done. Um, next, of course, we need to install the, or connect the power, the uh, processor fan to the processor fan header on the motherboard. And I believe that is that one down there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, plug it in. So on this motherboard, that's the gray header down here, just next to the, uh, the audio ports on the rear, you can see there. Um, there is a second fan header, which we'll uh, look at later on, which is up here. And uh, that is uh, clearly labeled the system fan. So that's the one you wanna connect your case fan to. But you, you can tie them both to the, uh, the processor temperature. Um, using Gigabytes, uh, either in the EFI of the Gigabyte motherboard or Gigabyte software, they're both pretty good. And uh, But you wanna, obviously you wanna make sure that you know which fan is connected to which header so you know which one you're controlling. So the next thing you need to do is just tuck those cables out of the way. Um, it's just good practice to do this because it will uh, prevent them getting kind of stuck 
in anything and uh, like, the, like the processor cooler once you attach the power supply on top it could get caught somewhere so just tuck it around the heat sink and in between um, you know any knobbly bits on the motherboard like that just to keep it out of the way and of course that's uh, that's now not going anywhere so um, we can now move on and install the memory we're now going to go ahead and install the memory and as you can see I've chosen Corsair's Vengeance LPX DDR4 memory. It runs at 3000 megahertz, which is, uh, you definitely want to go for the faster stuff when it comes to AMD systems because it does, uh, it does impact on performance quite a bit. And um, I wouldn't, maybe wouldn't recommend going for much higher than this uh, because A, you'll probably end up spending more and uh, B, sometimes, you know, sort of around the uh, 200, uh, sorry, 3200, 3400 megahertz, um, sometimes compatibility is a little bit flaky, but I found that with pretty much any memory kit that's running at 3000 megahertz, you can run it on nearly any, any AMD motherboard these days. Again, I've gone for a kit of uh, two memory modules and I recommend you do the same because if you go for a single module, if, even if it is a bit cheaper, you'll be losing out on dual channel mode and that does hurt performance here um, quite a bit in fact. So don't go for a single uh, single mem uh, module kit, go for a dual module kit. I've gone for 8 gigabytes, which is two 4 gigabyte sticks. Um, you can go for um, 16 gigabytes if you think you'll be upgrading the system in future or if you'll be doing a lot of photo editing and that kind of stuff because it, it, sometimes they demanding programs, they do use more than 8 gigabytes. But, for this PC, you know, eight gigabytes is, is gonna be more than enough. So installing it, really, really easy. Um, you can only install it one way round, easy as that. And as you can see, there's a small notch in the memory and uh, one side is shorter than the other uh, in terms of the actual uh, uh, connector down here. And uh, what you'll need to do is just line that up with a small uh, flange in the bottom of the, uh, the memory slot there. And uh, all it does is just click into place like that. Really, really easy. So here's the Cooler Master Elite 110, and it's a case I'm quite familiar with. I've done a few builds with this case over the years, and um, I just love it because it's really, really compact. It's got a very, very, very small dimensions. It's uh, especially shallow, which I like because it can fit into uh, TV cabinets and entertainment cabinets, units, that kind of thing, quite easily. And um, I've gone for the mesh front version because it allows a lot more air in uh, to keep your PC cool than the uh, the solid front panel version and uh, right now it's it's not quite end of life but it's not going to be around for that much longer I'm told by Cooler Master so uh, you'll want to pick it up uh, fairly quickly if you do want if you do want this case and uh, on Amazon it costs around sort of 40 or 50 dollars and uh, I think Amazon Prime members get a pretty good deal um, as well so if you're a Prime member um, check out the links below that go straight to this case and you can pick it up a bit more cheaply than your average customer can. What we need to do now is just pop off the case and we can start installing all the hardware. So to install the motherboard, what you need to do is to grab um, four of these things, which are the motherboard standoffs, the uh, little gold um, threaded end uh, standoffs, which lift the motherboard off the bottom of the case to stop it shorting out. So these are absolutely vital, you need to grab these. So you can see in there that I've already installed two of them. Uh, you'll need four because there are four mounting holes on the motherboard. So one goes there, one goes there, and the other two I will screw in now. Uh, you can use your fingers, but Cooler Master does include a little nut that sits on top of the, or sort of fits over the standoffs um, like a socket, and you can use, then use a screwdriver to tighten them, which is uh, a really nice addition. And uh, there you can see uh, all four of them in there. And uh, once you've done that, you can go ahead and install the I.O. panel, which I'll uh, speak to you about in a minute, and then you can install the motherboard. Next we're going to install the rear I.O. shield. So this just slots into the case, it's included with the motherboard, so you need to look into your in the motherboard box for this. And uh, all it does is just sits around the back here and uh, just pops into place, it can be a little fiddly, and uh, it just uh, blanks off a lot of those ports, so uh, prevents dust getting in, that kind of thing. Uh, usually fairly easy to install, but watch your fingers, and uh, it just allows the ports to kind of pass through here, and it just uh, just makes it all look uh, a lot nicer. And as I say, it sort of prevents dust getting in um, around those ports as well. We've just got a, a bunch of connectors to deal with now. So uh, the first one that I'm going to deal with is the uh, the case fan. So Kilomaster includes a 120 millimeter case fan in the front there so what you want to do with this is to connect it to the fan header uh, the system fan header on the motherboard which is this one down here and uh, alternatively what you can do is connect it using the adapter that Cooler Master includes with its case um, that converts this 
small connector to a four pin Molex connector. Um, that might be easier to, um, to, to work out and to, you might be a bit more familiar with that, but that will mean that the case fan is spinning at full speed all the time, which is what we don't want to do. Nothing wrong with that, it's just gonna cause a lot more noise. So with uh, connecting the, this, this header to directly to the motherboard, you're gonna be able to allow your system to control the fan speed based on temperatures, which is a good thing. And um, if, you're, you know, if you're familiar with the BIOS, then you can actually head in there and you can uh, control the fan speed or set the silent fan process profile, that will mean that the fan is running um, very, very quietly most of the time and it may even switch off if temperatures are really low, which is great. So uh, very easy to install. There are four pins on the header here. There's three pins on here, but there's a uh, kind of two clips on the bottom of the, uh, on the top of the, uh, the, the connector and uh, they line up with a small plastic flange on the fan header on the motherboard and to install it, you just line those up and away you go. So that's now the front uh, fan connected and ready to go. Next is the USB 3 header. So this will um, allow you to power the USB 3 ports on the side here. So both of those will become operational once you connect this. Um, it does have an optional cable on the side here. I say optional, it's not really optional. It's uh, actually instead of this connector. And what it is, is uh, if, your if your motherboard doesn't have a USB 3 header, this one does, but if your motherboard's quite old or you've picked one up off eBay or something, um, and it doesn't have a USB 3 header, you can actually use the smaller one to connect to a USB 2 header and that will actually give you uh, or allow those two ports on the side to work albeit at USB 2 speeds not USB 3 speeds so you don't need to connect that to anything uh, you just want to use this one if you've got a USB 3 header so that's what we're going to do here and uh, I'm just going to route those cables sort of around the side a bit around the side of the processor cooler so they're tucked out of the way very easy to install you can only install it one way around again there's like a small flange on the bottom there that sort of sticks out and that'll uh, force you to install it the right way around so next up you've got the uh, the small um, front panel headers which are the power supply uh, sorry the power switch and reset switch and uh, they actually go into the blue and uh, blue and uh, no, sorry uh, red and sort of light blue slots over the back of the uh, the USB uh, header. So what I will actually do there is remove that header for now. Um, should have done that before. So if I remove the uh, USB 3 header, you might be able to get a better shot of those down there. And uh, that's one of the colored ones. So first of all, we want to find the power switch cable. And that goes onto the red one down the bottom. I'm just going to check. There are actually some labels um, right the way at the bottom. Um, yeah, so power switch is the, uh, the red the red switch and it's kind of uh, acronyms down there and um, the reset switch just goes on the top of that there like that. Now there are two other cables which are the hard disk drive LED and the um, power LED. I'm not going to install those uh, because you don't have to and uh, to be honest the blinking lights on the side of the on the side of the case kind of get on my nerves <laughs> so you can do them it does give an indication that the pc is on um, other than noise of course but if you're building the pc for like a home th uh, home theater pc or a server that's going to be kind of in your face while you're watching videos then you don't really want flashing lights all the time and that kind of stuff so uh, but otherwise feel free install them that's absolutely fine um, another thing that i've uh, not connected if i just move the, uh, the case around a bit up here is the, I think it's the uh, the white port over the back there. Um, that is the um, onboard audio uh, header, which will allow you to connect to the uh, audio jacks on the front of the case there. So I, to be honest, I never use those. I've, I, I either use a USB headset or my speakers are plugged in around the back. Um, so, but if you do want to uh, to connect that, the uh, the cable is just at the front of the case. I've tucked mine away for now, um, but that is where you connect the audio header for that runs off the front of the case. So I'm just going to uh, reconnect the uh, USB 3 header, and uh, last but not least is the uh, the SATA cable, which you can uh, hopefully see here. That will um, just hook into one of the SATA ports down the front there. So hopefully you can see that now that uh, everything is connected and we are ready to go. So we've installed our motherboard standoffs and we're now ready to go ahead and install the motherboard. So very, very easy step. I just wanna make sure that the rear of the motherboard, the ports here, line up with the ports on the, uh, the back in the IO shield there. And uh, just slide the motherboard in, just make sure all the other cables and things are out of the way. 
and uh, I usually find it's easy to uh, line up the motherboard with the ports and push it in and that means that everything else kind of lines up. You find that the, uh, the standoffs, standoff holes line up and that kind of thing so you can see there all the ports are all lined up on the, uh, the rear of the, uh, the motherboard and the IO shield and then what you need to do is find the motherboard screws. They'll, these will be labelled in the instructions. Uh, they're the thicker threaded screws um, with flat tops with this particular case, it will vary from um, case to case, so make sure you read the instructions to double check which screws you actually need. There are four mounting holes, obviously, one for each standoff on this motherboard, and make sure you use all of them. Um, it might be a pain on some motherboards to actually get out the holes, but you need to use all of them because otherwise the motherboard can actually lift uh, when, once you've installed a graphics card, especially in a case that's mounted uh, either on its side or is just like your typical tower case that kind of thing, so it's really, really important to use all the motherboard mounting holes. Uh, but just four to deal with on, on this one. And uh, there we go, that's the uh, motherboard installed, so we can then move on to the rest of the hardware. Okay, so I've put the, uh, the four other rubber mounts onto the uh, SSD there, and what you can see is that the, the screw goes straight through the, uh, the, rubber, uh, the rubber mount, and um, you have the small part of the rubber mount sitting underneath the screw. And the reason for that is because when you come to install the SSD, those little part, those smaller parts of the rubber mounts will go straight through those four holes in the side of the case, and you just press the SSD down like that. Now, that's really easy, um, but I was just doing that for show there. You don't actually do it on the outside of the case, you actually do it on the inside, which probably isn't as quite as easy to see. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. So that's the SSD locked in place there. And uh, what I would do now is the last thing you should probably do is install the power supply. So you kind of need all the other cables tied it away and stuff first, because the power supply will actually sit in the top here and you're not going to be able to get at the rest of your PC. So next up, I will be um, connecting up the SATA cable and uh, tidying up the other cables. Right then, so I've connected the, uh, the SATA cable to the, uh, the SSD over the back there. Hopefully you can see that. I'll just move the case a bit further forwards. And uh, the SATA cable obviously comes with your motherboard. So basically everything that I've, uh, that I've shown you here comes with everything you need. You don't need to buy anything else. And uh, the case even comes with some uh, cable clips uh, that we we'll use to tidy up the PC later. Uh, so what you want to do is just thread that cable round the, uh, the front of the case. I'm actually going to route it underneath the case fan there. Um, I think you can see that, so it's kind of gone underneath the case fan, keeping it well out of the way of everything else, especially the case fan itself. And uh, we're just going to connect that to the SATA port down there. So all that's now left now is to um, tidy up these cables a bit, and uh, I'll just show you roughly how to do that. You just want to—it's just good for good practice. It will maybe improve airflow a bit. It certainly does in larger cases, and uh, it's just a question of um, just gathering together, especially some of the more uh, the unwanted cables, like I haven't used the onboard audio jack because I have a, a wireless headset. And uh, what we would do is you just want to gather the cables into bunches and just kind of anchor them onto the side of the PC case there. So um, what I'll do is I'll just uh, go ahead and do all that and then you can see where I've tucked them and things in the next clip. I have done a very, very quick job with cable tidying, so I'm just going to snip off these cable tie tails, and uh, we are now ready to install our power supply. Here is the uh, Cooler Master Master Watt Lite 500 watt power supply, and we're gonna go ahead and install it. Uh, but first, what you wanna do is connect the power cables to your hardware, because as I say, the power supply kind of sits up there and you're going to find it very difficult to actually get at those cables and connectors with that installed. So first of all you want to locate the big fat uh, 24 pin ATX connector. Now that will have like a small um, clip on the side that you need to uh, just connect together there and then uh, just mount that into the large 24 pin connector on the side of the motherboard. Struggling to get that in there because there's so many pins to deal with. There we go. And uh, just push it in until it clicks. Uh, next up, we've got the eight pin uh, CPU power connector, which if you can see on here, uh, where has it gone? Even I've lost it now. Yeah, so it's uh, 
just down the uh, the back there next to the uh, the power supply I would just uh, see if I can zoom in on the camera so you can see that a bit more clearly okay and uh, I've just moved in and uh, hopefully you can see the uh, the 8 pin connector just down there so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hook that up as well and uh, even with uh, the motherboard in place it's actually really really easy to do that there we go gotta love working with the cooler master elite 110 or 110 whatever way you want to call it now there are there are going to be a few cables here that you won't be using such as the uh, the graphics card cables so uh, that's something else that we'll need to cable tidy later so that's the motherboard done but now what we want to do is uh, move to the other other side of the case and uh, you want to find the uh, one of these SATA cables which uh, looks like that one of the SATA power cables and um, you just want to thread that through the case like I've done here. Just hook it onto the SSD on the side there, like that. So well, that is all the power cables connected. So we now need to thread these around so we can actually install our power supply and um, then actually secure it itself. Okay, so one, uh, one little thing I've done here is just uh, tied off all of the, uh, the redundant cables, or at least they'll be redundant for now. I won't be using them in this build, but just tying them off with either a, with a cable tie or one of the, uh, the original sort of cable, uh, cable ties that the, uh, the, the power supply came with. And uh, that would just allow these cables to kind of uh, just dangle uh, inside the case um, out of the way uh, once you install it. We've got um, two options with the, uh, the power supply here. We can either have it facing down, which uh, I think I'm not sure Killing Master actually specifies an orientation for it. Having it face down will obviously mean that it is drawing air from inside the case out the back. So bearing in mind we don't have any other um, exhaust fans on this case, so I'm inclined maybe to do that. The other, the alternative is to have it as I've got it here, which is with the fan pointing. That will be drawing um, air in through the top of the case, through the, uh, the fan. I'm pretty sure, let me just look at, yeah, there's a big... Uh, uh, hole in the top of the case so that would allow some air in there and then out the back but I'm kind of against that for two reasons um, you're probably not going to be able to fit directly under that roof vent in the case so that fan will be kind of you know starred there a little bit but also if you spill a drink or something on the case that water is going to go straight into the power supply with inevitable consequences so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go with my gut instinct here even though it means that this lower fan will be um, maybe fighting for air a bit between it and the processor cooler but the two are you know they're not that close together and we're not building a you know a, a massive high-end system here and uh, to be honest we need some way of getting the hot air out of the case so this is the way the way round I'm gonna do it so it's pretty easy as I say to uh, to just slot the power supply in you can actually remove this rear bracket uh, but because the power supply I'm using here is relatively small you don't really need to do that um, so uh, yeah and the the fans actually it only covers half the processor cooler so um, I don't think the two will be fighting for for air that much so um, I think this is definitely the uh, the lesser of two evils as far as mounting the power supply goes so there's just uh, four screws to deal with here all very easy and uh, then I will just tidy up the cables a little bit so there we go that's the uh, that's the power supply installed and uh, if I just flip it around you can hopefully see that the uh, the processor cooler actually extends a fair bit away from the uh, the power supply fan, so I don't really have too much of a concern with that uh, doing anything too nasty in there. One thing we do have to worry about though are these uh, the power supply cables, which have sort of gone down into the processor cooler. So we need to make sure all of those are well out of the way and tucked into the front of the case. You can't really see that happening until you actually mount the uh, the processor cooler. So it's a simple job just to route them round the processor cooler to the front of the case. I'll do that same with the uh, 24 pin ATX connector, just move them out of the way. And uh, just tucking a lot of these cables out of the way over the other side of the case as well. Um, this is one reason why a uh, modular power supply is quite a good idea because you can kind of get rid of a, lo a lot of these cases. So uh, that is pretty much it looking from the inside. I'm just going to do a bit more final tidying up and then we can uh, finish off. 
Okay, so just a really quick build this one. And uh, as you can see, I've got um, all the cables kind of neatly bunched together. You can obviously spend a bit more time on the cable tidying and tuck, you know, sort of tuck them into corners and that kind of thing, but this is absolutely fine. Probably not dissimilar to what you'd expect if you bought this uh, a PC from a company uh, built in this case. And um, the main things are that there's plenty of room between the, uh, the front fan and those cables there. There's nothing that's gonna stray um, into that fan at any point. And the same goes for the, uh, the power supply fan. It does have a protective um, uh, sort of layer, um, a protective, um, what do you call it, like a grill in front. And uh, that will stop any cables kind of going in there. And then obviously the power supply, the uh, CPU fan is uh, even more important because it isn't protected by any grills or anything like that. And uh, as you can see, it's completely clear, they're clear there all the way down to the other side. So that is the PC pretty much built and ready. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is just uh, flip it around. As you can see, the motherboard has uh, onboard Wi-Fi, so we can just uh, go ahead and uh, grab the uh, Wi-Fi aerial here. And uh, you just screw those in like so. And I forget whether this is actually magnetic. Yeah, I think it is. So you can... Um, just have your uh, your Wi-Fi aerial kind of sticking out the back um, like that. If uh, depending on where your, uh, your where your PC is, or you can kind of flip it around, it is it does rotate, and you can just have it there like that, still sticking up. And um, that is pretty much it. So I'm going to put the uh, put the top back on, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to fire it up. Just uh, plugged in the power supply, and uh, we're going to go ahead and try and fire it up. Already know the signs of life because the uh, one of the power lights is on down there and well hey first time so uh, I can feel the uh, power supply drawing out, uh, expelling a bit of air and uh, the front fans on as well and that's actually surprisingly quiet don't know if you can hear that but there's uh, definitely signs of life it's pretty quiet and um, I'm really really happy with this build so inside there's enough room for a, uh, a reasonable size graphics card so we're not using that space at the moment but of course you can upgrade it in future there's also space in the front for an all-in-one liquid cooler so if you wanted to go for something a bit more potent than the Ryzen 3 2200G then you can do that and uh, there's a bit more room for an air cooler as well but not a whole lot um, so I think air, you know liquid cooling is definitely the way to go with this case so anyway hope you enjoyed the build uh, you can find all the links to all the hardware in the link below and uh, don't forget to check out my Forbes article where I li also list all the hardware and uh, go into a bit more depth and uh, have some photos if you prefer looking at that on your phone rather than working through a video as you uh, build build along with your with all your hardware and uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe <laughs>